storytelling. Storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. All right, so how do you grow your outdoors YouTube channel? The thing about YouTube now is that it's been taken over with vlogs. See, I hate doing this type of video, but certain things need to be done in this fashion where I'm just sitting here, out here working on the boat, whatever, and I am can talk to you about some things. But it always comes down to telling a story. Take the last video I did where I was about the coupler. You think it's just a simple tutorial video, right? But no, there's a story. Someone asked me about how to remove the coupling on the mud motor. Since I had already bought a, a new power head for this motor, I said, wow, this is a great time to teach that. Maybe need to come back and do some of these maintenance videos for the mud motor now. Well, it's not just a how-to video. It's actually a story. It's a story about a guy trying to remove this difficult to remove part on his mud motor. Hmm. Just getting this part out. That guy got a... <laughs> you have to tell stories. The great thing about fishermen, particularly, because we're the greatest storytellers ever known, known to mankind. We know how to tell stories. How many fishing stories have you heard in your life? The question is, is how do you tell those stories with motion picture? You know, there's different styles. Vlogging, is, this is one way where you're just, it's sort of like campfire guy telling the story. Some people excel at that. They can just tell a good story. Me, I tend to be more of, I'm wanting to, I want my fishing adventures and my mud motor adventures to be like little miniature documentary films. And so I'm telling story in a visual means, which means I have a full script and there's a three act structure and there's a, all that kind of stuff that goes into it. And that's why it takes me so long to make a, a fishing episode. That could be good eating though, but I just don't have the time. Big piece of bluegill, he ate that. A little too hot now, cooking a little too fast, so we back off the heat. That's how you control the temperature. This is the but it takes good storytelling. The best book I've read so far on storytelling with motion picture is called, a book called Documentary Storytelling by um, Dr. I think she's Dr. Bernard, uh, Sheila Courant Bernard. And that's good for those of you who really want to get into more of a filmmaking aspect of it. it. Doesn't mean you have to. That's not the only way to film, is only one way to tell a story with video. The story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. I've demonstrated this in various ways on various other videos. I may try to put a link. And that's one of the things that you don't see a lot of on YouTube because every, everything's a big selfie fest. It has to be a story. People want a good story. They want to take them on an adventure with you. When you get to your boat dock, get some shots of the landscape that sets the stage for the story. You might even tell people, hey, we're, I'm here trying to catch a trophy catfish today on, some, on a hand line. Hey, it kind of sets the stage for the story. If things don't go to plan, film it. Turn the camera on. Let people see the struggles like you saw with me trying to get that motor off, but couldn't. That's part of the story. If every story, everything goes perfectly, what's the point of watching the story? I mean, think about the, all the Marvel movies that have come out here and the Infinity War and all that. Well, if everybody, if they just beat up Thanos in the first episode, that what's the point, you know? Think about Empire Strikes Back. Well, the Empire's got to strike back. The good guys can't win all the time. It just didn't, it's not all that good a story, right? There has to be some kind of difficulty, some sort of antagonist, as they would say. Every movie you've ever seen, there's an antagonist. There's not necessarily bad guy, there is just some sort of opposition to the main character in the story. Let's take Star Wars, Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back. Here's 
our hero, young Luke Skywalker, guided by Obi-Wan to go train with an old master on Dagobah, Yoda. And he's training, but he's failing. I mean, he's failing every test, he's failing all the classes, he's just flunking out in every way. There's the antagonist, it's sort of a man versus environment. It's the environment he's in. So in this case, Yoda is a bit of an antagonist. Is Yoda a bad guy? No, by no means. But he is that source of tension that, you know, that Luke can't quite get over the hump. He can't pull the X-Wing out of the swamp. He can't, he can't keep levitating the rocks without getting distracted. He can't, he's, you know, and, 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 and here's Yoda, a thousand years of training Jedi, and here's this one guy, he just can't seem to really train. And he's failing in the, at the tree, he sees himself in the Vader suit, and you know, just symbolic of, 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 of him really going down the same path as Vader was. And, and at the end, he totally, he basically quit school, right? And he went to face Vader, having flunked all the tests, having flunked all the classes that Yoda and Obi-Wan had for him, he gonna go face Vader. And what happened, gets his hand chopped off. The good guys lose that round. They absolutely lose. Now they come back and win in the episode six, but you see there's the tension. The tension is not a bad guy, and although Vader was the bad guy and he was the antagonist in the end. For the bulk of the movie, the real bad guy was just the environment that Luke was in and the pressures he was facing knowing he's having these premonitions of his friends dying for the cause and he just he, there's that internal struggle of him okay do I sit here on this stupid swamp world with this frog man picking up rocks or do I charge in there full guns blazing and try to kill Vader right so he's fighting that fight internally so there's some conflict even within there's conflict without with Yoda, Obi-Wan, and the training system they have, and we see in the last Star Wars film how, you know, the Jedi system really was flawed, so, but that's a whole other point. The point is there needs to be conflict in your story. When you see a lot of YouTube videos, there's no conflict, there's just this, everything is happy, hey YouTube, and ha, ah, and you're like, I'm, I'm out of here. You got three seconds, I'm gone, right? Whereas, the just just in the mud motor story you saw me of trying to get the coupling out there's I, I'm, I'm honking down on this thing you know I'm a big guy and I'm putting all my strength and it just won't budge but then there come that moment of triumph where you, you had the big music and a bam you, you know I had to just put my hand in a little different place and it, and it and it loosened up and there's the story now this is what we're doing this is not really a story this is just a lecture this is just like we were in a classroom this is a campfire. This is a man-to-man -man talk, as it were. This is not really a story. I'm, if you really want to grow your YouTube channel, an outdoors YouTube channel, you have to master storytelling. The good thing is you've been watching TV and movies your whole life. You already know about good stories. You know a good story when you hear one. You know a good TV show when you see one. You know a good movie when you see one. The question is, how do you take that and structure your fishing videos according? A lot of outdoors YouTubers would do well to um, start studying filmmaking. Not that you have to be a filmmaker, not that you, even in your vlogs, even in your fishing vlogs, if it's all just going to be talking head, it's just boring. And that's why I hate doing these types of videos, but I'm not gonna be able to get out in the water until the deck on boats fix. Oftentimes in the story, you're gonna be the hero. That hero's gonna have to have some sort of struggle that they're facing. And even if the hero doesn't succeed, the story needs to come to some point of resolution. Think about the year when I had that 212 CC Predator and I and the you know, I kept building this engine and I kept having problems and building an engine and kept having problems. And what, had, what eventually happened? The motor completely blew up. I don't have that footage anymore because I've had major hard drive failures and stuff. That motor eventually blew up and I lost an entire fishing season. Right? That was the climax of that story. That's one of the reasons why you hear me talking about hot rodding mud motors the way you do because I've had catastrophic failures that have made me lose an entire season of fishing. Just because a story ends 
sadly or badly doesn't mean it's a bad story. It's okay not to catch anything on your fishing videos. That's part of the story. Go look at Panfish's videos. How many, how many, that guy probably posts more skunk videos than anybody I've ever known, right? But that's the story. Is he gonna finally catch a fish this time? Is he gonna catch a record fish? I mean, he's caught, he's, he's a trophy fisherman. He's a, he's, a, he's a master angler and a trophy fisherman. He's got all these plaques on the wall. But he gets skunked an awful lot. That's okay. That's part of the story. People think that's part of the problem with social media. People think you have this perfect life or something. No. I mean, you know, people think you have this every time you cast, you're going to be reeling in a trophy fish. You're like, no. It's the journey and the story and the conflict and the way that journey, story, and conflict develop and ultimately resolve that makes the story. Now there are story conventions that have been around since the time of Aristotle and Plato and, 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 and Socrates, all these guys. The simple three-act structure. I've talked about this before. Very rarely will any, I just don't hardly see very many people even go this far. Just sit, it's just simply on your next fishing video, plan out a simple three-act structure. Structure. You have a, you know, we're kind of introduced to our character and what they're doing. And then in the second act, they go on their journey and, 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 their, and, and they meet with the initial conflict. And in the third act, the conflict escalates even higher. And then it finally resolves doesn't mean it's happy, but it finally resolves and the story ends. If you can incorporate elements of that three-act structure that's been around since almost the entire history of mankind, you can make much better videos and those videos will capture people's audiences faster, hold their attention longer, and drive them to subscribe, rate, comment, push the video and share it with other people who will watch, comment, and subscribe. I've seen too many people who are too concerned about subscribers and they're not concerned about good storytelling. It's like they don't even care about the video. They don't care about the quality of the video. The only thing they care about is subscribers. Subscribers, subscribers, subscribers. Views, views, views. And therefore they're only interested in their own pursuits and I think people can sense that from a mile away and that's probably why they don't have very many subscribers. You got to be a storyteller and you got to be able to take your natural storytelling ability as a fisherman and even all outdoorsmen are good storytellers, but to take that and to fuse it with this new or this language of motion picture is really what makes an outdoors YouTube channel special, separate from makeup channels or vlogging channels where all they do is sit around and talk about what they ate this month. Learn to tell stories and you will grow your audience over time.